Good morning everybody. It's the last Sunday in July and so it is the last morning that we're going to talk about David today. We're going to start a new series in August. So uh, I just wanted to say before we start our last session on David that we could have done a lot more. We just picked out four bits but there's a lot more to read and learn about David. Uh, so I do encourage you um, if you are uh, a, a good reader and enjoy reading and that you would like to read more about David you go for it and if you're not somebody who enjoys reading then get somebody else to read it to you okay because there's loads of good stories about David in the Bible um, and it would be really great if you had a look yourself because we've only had time to look at four bits now today we are going to look at a uh, part of David's life which didn't go so well I think this is really important that we remember that people in the Bible made mistakes as well and great examples of Christians like David, you know, he's often held up as uh, a hero, a Bible hero and that we should follow, you know, his example and stuff. But David made mistakes as well and so far we've had three very happy, exciting parts of David's life. So we had the first week where he got picked to be king because God saw his heart and he knew that his heart was um, in love with God. So that's very positive about David. David's in love with God. David has the right attitude that God wants. And so God picks him to be king. And then the second week, David's a hero because he has faith that God will help him kill the Goliath. And he, and he does. And he defeats the Philistines. And he saves Israel. And it's all very exciting. And David is a hero. And then last week, we had... Uh, David dancing for joy when he went to get the Ark of the Covenant and he brought it home to where it should be and he was dancing and praising God because he was just so excited about following Jesus and loved um, God so much that he just couldn't help himself he was just bursting out of him so he was dancing in the streets and even when other people didn't like it that he was dancing in the street he just did it anyway because he didn't care and it was all about how fabulous David was as an example because he's so um because he was just so crazy for God and lived his whole life for God and all of that is very happy and very positive and makes David sound a bit impossible to follow he makes me feel a little bit like I don't think I can do that I just don't think I can. I'm not as good as David. And so today we are going to look at a little bit of David's life, okay? And I'm not going to read the passage, all right? I'm going to tell you the story and I've got some pictures to help. Um, I do apologise, I don't have Lego like Helen um, because I'm, I'm not really a Lego girl. But I've got some pictures, so I hope they help you. Um, and uh, how fabulous was the Lego last week, by the way? Amazing. Helen's great at that, isn't she? But... Um, so I've got some pictures and uh, hopefully we are going to just remind ourselves that David was human just like us and that God used him anyway. So when David was king, he had a big palace. And he had a palace that had a flat roof. Now, quite a lot of the houses um, in that part of the world have fat, flat roofs that you can go up and stand on. And I, you can't stand on our roofs because our roofs are like this and you'd get the wibble wobbles and fall off. But David's roof was flat. And so you could go up there. They had steps up the side and you could walk along. And because David lived in a palace, because he was the king, his roof was higher than everybody else's so his palace was huge and his palace was high up sort of you know looking out over the city and so he was up there one day having a little walk around in the gardens and having a look out they had gardens on the reef yes amazing isn't it and there's trees and plants and probably had a bench to sit on I'm guessing maybe and um he w was up there and he was looking out over the city and uh, while he was looking out he saw a rather lovely lady and she was out on her roof as well now this there we go that's david looking out 
of his garden reef and this lovely lady here her name was called Bathsheba she's very lovely isn't she there she is and David asked his men who is that lovely lady and so they said her name's Bathsheba and her husband is um Uriah and Uriah is a soldier so he's not here at the moment because he's away with the army and so David asked his men to bring Bathsheba to the palace and when he did that when they did that and they brought Bathsheba to the palace uh, David treated Bathsheba and acted with her like she was his wife but she wasn't she was the wife of Uriah and uh, that's not a good thing to treat somebody else's wife as if they're that as if they're your wife that is not a good thing but David did it anyway and uh, what happened was that David realized that this was not a great situation and that really uh, Bathsheba needed to become his wife properly uh, but he didn't know what to do because there was Uriah that was her real husband what's he going to do about Uriah now I don't know if your mama or dad or any or teacher or whoever says to you it's time to make a choice you have to choose you can make a good choice or a bad choice David had already made one bad choice by treating Bathsheba like she was his wife when she wasn't. That was one bad choice. Then he made a second bad choice. He decided to get rid of Uriah. And do you know what he did? He had a little word with his uh, army generals and uh, he arranged for Uriah to be right in the front of the fighting where they were at battle. So he sent messages and he said, I want you to put Uriah at the front. And so there was a battle and Uriah got killed in the battle. And he was killed in the battle because he was put right at the front where where the fighting was fiercest so David basically arranged for Uriah to get killed in the battle so although he didn't kill him himself he arranged for it to happen so he might as well have done it himself because it was his idea and his orders that made it happen even though he didn't actually do the killing that is a bad choice. So David has now made two bad choices. The first one, treating Bathsheba like she was his wife when she wasn't. Number two, killing her husband so that she can actually become his wife. Well, that doesn't sound like David the hero that we've been learning about, does it? But you know what? He's the same David. Because David was just human like the rest of us. And humans make mistakes. We make bad choices. Now, I don't know if you can do this with your hand. Okay. In Makaton, which is a sign, uh, kind of sign language. Okay, this is choice. You may have to choose. Make a choose. And you can make a good choice or you can make a bad choice. Okay, so you do choosing like this. And David made a bad choice have you ever made a bad choice now i don't think any of you have ever arranged to have somebody killed in a battle but i bet you've made other bad choices i know i have maybe about how you treat your family your brother or sister maybe how you behave at school Maybe how you behave when your mum or dad ask you to do something that you don't want to do. And yes, David's choice feels huge. It feels much worse. Well, it's much worse than not doing what my mum or dad say. But you know, when God looks at it, it's just making a bad choice. 
it doesn't matter what the choice actually is. It's just making a bad choice. God looks at it all the same. And he says it's just a bad choice. Now, some bad choices have big consequences. Now, a consequence is the result of something happening. It's the result of a choice that you make. So, for example, if I choose to uh, raid the cupboard and eat all of the biscuits out of the tin before tea when my mum is not looking then the consequence of that, the result of that is two things. Number one, when my mum finds out that I've eaten all the biscuits, I'm going to be in big trouble and will probably lose, you know, something that I really like, like lose the opportunity to go out or lose my favourite game or something because, because she would say, well, you stole all the biscuits, so I'm taking this off you. The second consequence that might happen is that I might feel really sick. And I actually might feel poorly and I might feel sorry for myself because I feel poorly. And then my mum might say to me, and why do you feel so poorly? Oh, because I stole all the biscuits. So it's my fault. I feel poorly because it's my fault. And it's a bit like that with David. David's decision to treat Bathsheba like his wife when she wasn't, and to have her husband Uriah killed had consequences, big consequences. And we don't have time to go in to that today. But the next thing that happened is that a man of God called Nathan, a prophet called Nathan, here he is, he comes. And he says to David, David, you've made some bad choices and there are going to be some consequences and you need to sort yourself out. And so David, there you are, you can see him sat on his throne with his head in his hands. There we go, if I put it there so you can see it. And God sends Nathan to talk to David and to remind him about good choices and bad choices and what has happened as a result of that. So David has a think and David's really sad. He's very sorry about what he's done. He's very sorry. And in this picture we can see here, he starts to worship God and he starts to talk to God again and he says that he's sorry and he praises God because he knows that the right way to live is to follow God. Now, while there were some bad consequences or bad results of what David did, for example, one of the results was that Uriah was dead, there were also eventually some good results as well. And one of those was that um, David uh, eventually had a son called Solomon and he became king and Solomon was a great, great king of Israel as well, just like his dad David. But that good result, that good consequence came much later. First of all, there were some bad results from David's bad choice. Uriah died and other things happened as well. This story reminds us, it reminds us that our Bible heroes are just human, just like us. They made, some of them made some terrible choices, just like David did. And I know all of you guys, I mean, we haven't arranged for anybody to be killed and we're not likely to make huge, big, bad choices like that. But like I said earlier, we make smaller bad choices and sometimes those have results and consequences that are not good. And we need to be like David. We need to go back to God and say we're sorry and admit that we haven't lived his way and that we've made bad choices and we need to say God I'm sorry I want to start again I want to start again and make good choices and do you know what the great thing about God is that just like he did with David he will do that for us
and then there will be good results and good consequences, just like there were with David and his son Solomon. So, this was a very long talk and I'm very sorry about that, but it is always important to remember that the people that we read about in the Bible are really just like us. And so when we read amazing stories like David killing Goliath, we can also remember that David made bad choices and made mistakes just like us. And so because we know that, we know that God will love us and forgive us just like he did with David. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the way that you reminded David that he had made bad choices. Thank you that eventually there were good results that came out of it. Thank you that David is just a human like us and that he reminds us that even if we make mistakes, that you will always love and forgive us and welcome us back just like you did with him. Help us to be brave to say sorry when we've made bad choices, both sorry to you and to the other people involved. Amen.